And just to quote him, I'm doing a free operating system, just a hobby. Won't be a vegan professional like a new uh, for the 386. <laughs> uh, and uh, oh, it's not portable, 386 only, and it probably never will support anything other than AT hard disks because that's all I have. It's all this posting by this guy, and, and in his signature he said uh, uh, that he was writing a free uh, Unix clone, and if you want to know more, you should do a finger at Torvald said, Kruna had and, and so I, I did that and, and sent an email to hey, this is cool, so uh, how can I use that? And so in September uh, of 91, I downloaded version 0.11, so he made me wait three days because 0.11 was the first one you could install without having to delete your own Linux partition while doing it. And, <laughs> and so this is this is back in the days when we had the root disk, the root disk, and all that happened is, I mean, you get a few messages and then you get a root prompt, you get the double hash, that's it. There is no login, there are no virtual terminals, there is no virtual memory. There is nothing except a keyboard driver, a driver, a serial console driver, and um, a hard disk driver that does the original Linux file system. And that was it. And I heard about this person from Europe who had done this software, I didn't even really know what it was, but I did know it when this week miserable Intel PC things. <laughs> <laughs> Not a real workstation like an alpha. <laughs> and, but so, when was it? What year was that? This was May of 1994. And the, the person who was the head of the Unix special interest group, Kurt Riesler, wanted us to bring this person across to talk about this. And I said, well, I don't even know who this person is or what they did, but a lot of times Kurt has good ideas, so I think we should fund this. I went to my management. And they said, well, we don't know who Kurt is or, 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 or even who this guy is or anything, but sometimes Mad Luck has good ideas yeah, to find us. <laughs> and then Kurt wanted this PC to run the software one, not an alpha. He wanted a stupid Intel based PC. So we got him one, went down there, and there was Kurt trying to install this software on the PC, not having very much luck, and all of a sudden this very nice, quiet young man with sandy brown hair wearing glasses. Sandals with, with wool socks, he comes along and says, Can I help you? <laughs> and Kirk kind of looks at him and smiles and says, Yes, I think you can. And about 10 minutes later, Linux was running on the PC. <laughs> this was the first time that Linux had ever installed Linux with a CD ROM because he didn't have a CD ROM. <laughs> <laughs> just felt like playing a really nice piano. <laughs> Everything was in the right place, and it was really responsive and stuff like that. And I said, ooh, this is a really Okay, so we've got, we got the, the inexpensive, but you know, demand page, virtual memory, 32-bit real processor, and the 386. Under $5,000 without power. Yeah, yeah, right. Uh, we've got uh, the new tool chain, so you can do the development. We've got the internet. But there, there's another factor. The person in Linus is, is a huge factor in making this happen. Linus is able to take people who vehemently disagree on architecture to get together and write code together. He was this nice young man from Helsinki, Finland, very polite, in a field of days, he's in front of Gucci magazine. He's the kind of person that you want your daughter to marry, okay? That's the person somebody <laughs> and this, it, it was it was it was a story that sold itself. This yeah. kid working on the person by the fire, you know, scratching the ones and zeros in the back of the shovels. <laughs> <laughs>
And ISPs realize that instead of having to buy a really expensive proprietary system like digital Unix, you can buy an inexpensive Intel PC with Linux on it and get all the things you needed as an ISP. Having people innovate, basically out and make the other guys because we are so much cooler than you are, and, and our our desktop team is even more bossy than yours. I was talking like that. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Why not? That was actually very useful because you had the KDE guys who desperately want to look and smell and feel like Windows, and yet the guys who absolutely untouched for anything on the earth wanted to make it as hard to use as possible. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 